Boom today, all you sports fans out there in the two sphere to you, the individuals, part of the collective. Welcome to Fast Track Sports Track Hunt here on Talk Radio version of the OMSR. Jan 4.5, I'll get to that in a sec. I am your brief but concise host, Will the Alternative ESPN Sports Thrill. For a tournament. Always do a little show like this, let you know the clip order coming up in the wise and wherefore as it get a significantly longer highlight reel. What's different about 4.5? Why not 5.0? Well, I just haven't redone the graphics yet, but 5.0, you get like the rundown and the clips coming up soon enough. I'll save my quickie sport rant to the segment and the legalese and the disclaimer for after the fact. You might want to stay tuned for that because quickie sport rants are always pretty good. Kind of go off all uh, Colin Cower style. It may not be all your cup of tea, but at least you won't have to hear it beforehand. All right, what's coming up? We're talking briefly and concisely about Kentucky and Michigan. Elite Eight. It's a ticket from ESPN. Good game. Highlights and analysis coming up. More analysis than anything else. Uh, and uh, just a, a little teaser on the quickie sport rant of the segment about just because these freshmen from Kentucky have been doing well these last three games, let's not forget the loss to South Carolina and this one and done, you know, oh, they should just all leave school anyway. Like, they're all going to get drafted, number one. Okay, now I'm saying too much. They should all stay in school. That's not going to happen. Okay, real quick. Well, outside Brad Priscilla, I'm Chris Cotter, coach, and then there were four. And we always, we already got a classic from Kentucky earlier on in this tournament. Can we get another one from this team that underachieved, really, all regular season long and just found their stride in the SEC tournament? Let's check it out. Kentucky and Michigan, the first of our two games on this day that we are going to cover. And five freshmen in the starting lineup for Kentucky. What else is new, right? How about Take that? Hadn't happened since 92. Fab Five. Take it on Nick Stauskas in Michigan with a Fab Five play. Stauskas in the first half hit the three-pointer. He has 18 points in the first half. Michigan up eight early, but this guy right here, Marcus uh, Lee. Marcus Lee, he had four field goals during the SEC season. Kentucky down six fans getting into the game, then Lee with the block, and then follows it up on the other end. He had ten points and four offensive rebounds. Amazing. Great athlete, waiting his turn. Willie Cauley Stein out, he got his chance. Second half, Andrew Harrison misses. Here's the big fella, Julius Randle. Kentucky was killing him on the boards all night long. They got 63% of their own missed shots, double the national average. Beautiful on the break there, Derek Walton Jr. to Glenn Robinson the third. His dad pumped up, fired up for it. But then Andrew Harrison to Aaron Harrison, the Twins getting involved. How about Aaron Harrison? His first field goal didn't come until eight minutes to go in the game. South is with the miss. Jordan Morgan has had a huge tournament with the and one. Michigan back up one. Then South misses. Walton is going to miss. Morgan again on the clap. Great hustle. These teams made big plays down the stretch, both ways. Tied at 72, seven seconds to play. Who's going to take the final shot for Kentucky? Aaron Harrison steps back and nails it. Four, three in the last eight minutes. Dad loves it in the stands. One final shot for Michigan. Stauskas, can he work the miracle from half court? Can't get it to go. Kentucky advances to the final four. Julius Randle, another double-double. He's a machine. That's 24 for him on this season. Second now among all freshmen in NCAA history. Michael Beasley had 28. They weren't going to go away, and neither were we. And whoever had the ball last... Uh, he's going to win it. Um, I can just tell you the last play we set up is Aaron just step back and shoot a deep three. They won't guard you. I mean, I, coach just told me to uh, get in and always be ready, so I just tried to stay ready uh, no, no matter what the time was and uh, contribute to the team. Tell them what I told you before for two days before this game. <laughs> All right, so y'all know Cal's always right, so... <laughs> Uh, he I was me, wrong. He, 1978, but it's been a while. Uh, he he told the team that I was gonna have a big day, knowing us we none of us believed him, but. And everyone he was in right. the world would be talking about you, is what I said. Right. Proud of you, kid. Speaking of 1978, that's when you met Coach Calipari, isn't it? Dean Smith's basketball camp. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. <laughs> These Kentucky kids, man, they're used to winning close games. Through four games, they won by a combined 17 points, which is tied for the third smallest combined margin of victory by a team reaching the Elite Eight since 1985. Uh, and this game, you know, 
Kentucky, Wichita State, a classic. This one was as well. And, and Coach Calipari said it. Neither team was going to give up until the final buzzer. Well, this Kentucky team has grown up before our eyes, Chris, really, when you think about it. I saw this team practice in December before the Baylor game, and they were not very good. In fact, they did look like an AAU team. And I think what happened, and you can hear it at the press conference, some of the kids talked about, uh, I think Andrew Harrison said, you can't coach emotion and basketball. You can't coach effort and basketball. you got to coach one or the other. These kids are finally playing hard. Now John Calipari is concentrating on coaching basketball, and they look look like a number one or number two seed. The team we thought we would see early in the year, they finally come together. And what was the key in this one? Obviously, you thought, well, Michigan's going to try and shoot from the outside because the size that Kentucky has down low, they're going to own the boards, and that's pretty much the way it went. I yeah. guess it just tipped in Kentucky's favor. Well, Kentucky dominated the glass. As we said, they got 63% of their own misses back, and that's twice the national average. But most importantly, and what we've seen from Kentucky over the last four games is maturity and poise. They have a sense now of sharing the ball, moving the ball. Nobody's worried about getting anything except a W, and it's, it's happening before our eyes, and it's happened at the right time and you know what John Calipari he always gets the last laugh well he did in this one too and you look at how Michigan shot the ball not poorly I no mean, I thought they well. played well and, and, and Michigan and Kentucky both had the same number of threes Kentucky was 7 of 11 from beyond the arc Michigan still 7 of 18 from three yeah. point range so it's still good I think the biggest thing that I enjoyed about this game so much is neither team would go away guys made big shots both ways the effort was there both ways the defense I think both teams are not great defensively but credit the offense Guys made huge shots, big plays, good hustle plays, and uh, it was a fun game to watch. Two things. First of all, the Harrison twins, and I hate to lump them both right. together, but I think they've both grown tremendously this year. When you talk about that size that they bring to the backcourt, if they're knocking down shots, yeah. that's a formidable duo. And then Julius Randle, too. There were times in this game when he was absolutely unstoppable, wasn't he? Well, he, he's been dominant all year, as you mentioned, the 24 double-doubles. Think about what Julius Randle has just done. The only freshman in the history of the game to ever grab double-doubles in his first four games, Gene Banks, back in 1978, Tinkerbell for Duke. But I, I, I got to give it to the Harrison twins because they really struggled early in the year. The body language was off. We all, awful. We all commented on it. And you know what? It's fun that they kept their nose to the grindstone. They listened to their coach. Andrew has become a consummate point guard. Aaron's making big shots. And the difficult thing now for Wisconsin is you're talking about two six foot six guards at the backcourt that are playing their yeah, best right now, and they're going to have to deal with it. Disappointed after Michigan suffered the loss. You know, they made a great shot um, coming down. You know, I thought we could, we did a pretty good job contesting it. And, you know, like you said, this, I mean, it's part of basketball. You know, it's going to happen to you um, where you're going to make the shot sometimes, and, you know, it's going to go against you sometimes where the other team makes the shot. So, um, you know, you got to tip your hat to Kentucky. They played a great game, and that was a big play down the stretch. First of all, congratulate Kentucky. A really uh, great game. They hit big shots when they needed to, uh, and so did we. It was a terrific basketball game and, and one that, that just – makes college basketball continue to grow stronger and stronger um, in, in today's uh, sports world. This year has been the most fun time I've had probably playing basketball ever. Um, really got close with a lot of guys. I uh, had the opportunity to grow uh, myself as a leader and be a mentor to some of these younger guys. And um, I just appreciate having the opportunity. We talked about Michigan's outside shooting. They scored 25 points outside the paint on Sunday. Their fewest in 11 tournament games in the last three years. Wolverines entered the game averaging a tournament high 39.3 points per game from outside the paint. Give me a thought on Michigan here. We saw Jordan Morgan there, the only senior in yeah. this bunch. So if they come back, John Beeline's going to have a pretty nice core to work around. And, and by the way, you expect the shooting numbers to go down the deeper you get into the tournament because the competition is better. But And I think you got to expect that Nick Stauskas is going to take a long, hard look at the NBA. Whether he does or not, John Beeline has stabilized his program now, and he's got great pieces in place, Michigan basketball, which has incredible tradition, going back to Kazzy Russell, Rudy Tomjanovich, the teams in the Final Four in 1976, of course, Fab Five. It's back. They're solid. We talk about how good the Big Ten was at the end of the year. This Michigan team won the regular season by three full games. And I've known for a long time how good a coach John Beeline is. In recent years, the country's finding out. And this program is on solid footing. Yeah, well, so is Kentucky. Clearly, when you talk about 
these one and doneers coming in, and, and Coach Cal getting the most of them most of the time. He arrived in Kentucky five years ago. It took him two years to reach his first Final Four, which he did in 2011. The Wildcats lost to eventual champ UConn in that Final Four. The next year, however, they didn't lose to anybody. Anthony Davis and the Cats rolled through the tournament, cut down the nets in New Orleans, and really set the standard for all great Kentucky teams in the Cal Perry era moving forward. Now they're back. Kentucky is 17 and 2 under Coach Cal in the NCAA tournament. 2014 is their 16th Final Four appearance, the third most of all time. So that is that. Good luck to either school. You know, one of these teams is going to have a bad day in that game. It's a terrible matchup if one of them's off. So on the quickie sport range of the segment, as I alluded to beforehand, about you know. Well, Kentucky's been doing so well with the Wichita State game. Ah, they, I think they totally lucked out on that. The, with all due respect to Kentucky fans, the Big Blue Nation, please do not come out of the woodwork because the comments are going to be moderated on this particular show. They, still, they being the freshmen at Kentucky, they're not all ready to go in the NBA. Maybe Randall and uh, the rest could benefit from staying. You know, a year in school. And by the way, you should check out on the channel from the, you know, the Northwestern decision, the National Labor Relations Board or Association, NRL, it sounds like uh, the NRA, but yeah, NRLB, deciding, yes, college players can unionize. The genie's out of the bottle. It's going to be more attractive as this thing sort of, you know, the J curve explodes with more and more schools coming on board with it and increasing the stipend. Let's not call them, you know, employees of the university and they're getting a salary for it. Let's just increase it or call it an increase to the stipend that is in addition to their scholarship. That's fair. So, yeah, no, that's probably not going to happen for two or three years. As a practical matter, with regard back to the freshmen in Kentucky, they sh I'm sorry, they should just stay another year at least... You know, the Harrison Twins, oh, they're 6'6", six, six, this big, tall backcourt in Kentucky. Dude, let's declare early and go to the NBA. Mm, maybe. Based only on height. But another year wouldn't hurt. All right, so all the video highlights courtesy to ESPN, the respective universities, everything else, to the OMSR. All right, thanks for watching those silly DYs while you're out there. We are later out of here.